Okay, so we're going to look at algebraic fractions here, and we've got, so we've obviously got the pronumerals there. So with adding and subtracting any fractions, we have to find a common denominator. So that means this number here, we need them to be the same. So what's the number that they both can go into? So we might say 16. So what you can do is you can say, all right, we can often set it up like this. We're going to make them both sixteenths. Now, this one is already 16, so I'll just leave it, yeah? What did I do to the 8 to make it 16? Times it by 2. So if I times that by 2, I have to times that by 2. So what's 7V times 2? Good. So you've got 14... V. Now that you've done that, you can add them together if they're like terms. Now, because they're both Vs, you can add them together. So what's V plus 14V? Yeah, so your final answer would be 15V over 16. I can't simplify that anymore, can I? Like there's no number that they both go into. That's as simplified. So let's have another little go at this one. What's a number that they both go into? Good, so 27 you're going to do. So you've timed, this one you haven't touched, but this one you've times by 3, so you have to times that by 3. So what would that make that one? 6u. Good, so if we simplify that, 8u plus 6u, 14u over 7. And you can't simplify that anymore, can you? Okay, so we've come up to these questions and they are still... It's adding or subtracting fractions, isn't it? Yeah? So when we add and subtract fractions, we have to get a common denominator, don't we? If I write over here, say I had one third plus two, um, even two quarters or something like that, right? If I said find a common denominator for that, what do you do? You've times, good, you decide that you're going to times three and four together because then you know they both go into that number, don't they? So it ends up being 12. So what you did is you said, all right, I times that by four. So it means I times this by four and you times that by three. So you times this by three. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to write a common denominator of as if I times them together, right? So I'm going to times them together. That would give a common denominator because that's what you did. Now, this one, what have I done to this one down here? What has been added to it? A time, I've essentially, haven't I, I've times this by V plus 1, haven't I? So therefore, I've got to times this up here by V plus 1, yeah? Now, what have I done to, um, so I've done to this one, I've times it by V, haven't I? That's what's added to it. So it means I've got to times this one by V. Does that make sense? So now when we um, expand that out, sorry, this is a bit messy, but anyway, I'm going over here, yeah? So if we go like that, I've got four times V plus one, and then I've got minus three times V. That's what I've done. And it's all over this common denominator of V plus 1 like that. Yeah? So you don't have to expand that denominator out. You can if you um, need to, but you don't. we don't normally bother with doing that. But we would bother with expanding the top, the numer numerator. So then you have to go like this. So I've got to go 4 times V and 4 times... One. So 4 times V is 4V, and then, yeah, good, plus 4 times 1. Then I've got minus 3V. Sometimes when you're doing a lot, yeah, and then V plus 1. Sometimes when you're doing a lot, you can just quickly put little brackets on the bottom and then at the final end write it all out. But, so yes, good, we would then simplify this. So the 4V and the minus 3V are similar. So what's 4V minus 3V? Yep, so I've got 1V plus 4 over V, V plus 1. Okay. So we're going to, I'll do this one here. 
So the common denominator, I'm just going to call it, it'll be e minus 4 and 3e plus 1 because I would times them together to find something they both go into. So then if I've done that, what have I done to this one here? I have times it by that, haven't I? So this 5 is going to get times by 3e plus 1 and then this... Um, this one has been multiplied by that, hasn't it? So I'm going to multiply by e minus 4. All right, so then, so what we'll do, I'll just tidy that up. So really I've got 5, 3e plus 1, and minus 4, e minus 4, yeah? And then you don't have to worry about expanding the denominator. Oh, sorry, the denominator. So what... You know how I said, oh, we're going to have to still do a few more steps. So instead of writing that all out, we often just do that. And then at the final answer, we'll write it all out. It saves you a bit of time. So I'm going to go 5 times 3e, which will be 15e. 5 times 1 plus 5. Then minus 4 times e. And then minus 4 times minus 4. What's a minus by a minus? Yeah, so be careful with that. And then we can tidy it up because we have like terms. So what's 15e minus 4e? 11e. And then we have um, these two, which it would be? Oh, sorry. 21. Good. And now I'm going to write out that properly because I'm at the end. Yeah? But during the meantime, you can just do those little brackets to save you a bit of time. That's okay. Often we do that. All right?